Before today's video begins, I need to let you know something. I had to go back and edit out a significant bit of the audio I used from the broadcast here because a couple years ago, some artist named Vilemass took this audio that he did not create and put it in one of his songs and then content ID'd it. So now, anyone who uses that original audio that he did not create gets copyright claimed and the revenue goes to him for audio that, once again, he did not create. So, my sincerest apologies for that and a wholehearted f*** you to Vilemass. I had to remove this audio here. Screw you, vile mess. Many unsettling broadcast intrusions have been discussed in the past, like the Max Headroom incident and the Captain Midnight broadcast intrusion. But one that gets relatively little coverage is the WKCR hijacking. I was able to find the source audio for this recording that no one has seemed to be able to find up until now, along with some more new information. Up until now, the most popular opinion seems to be that this broadcast never actually happened, but the true story is a bit more complicated than that. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Raycon. I just got myself a pair of Raycon earbuds, and I can honestly say they have far exceeded my expectations. These earbuds are good for just about anything, whether that be just a pair of everyday earbuds, gaming, or a long-lasting speaker. And better yet, these are incredibly affordable, starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. My favorite features on these are the noise isolation mode, which can keep you fully immersed by blocking out the outside noise, or the awareness mode, which will still deliver crisp audio without making you completely unaware of your surroundings. I also really like how these come with different size gel tips, so you can find the perfect fit for your ear. I've had issues with other earbud brands where the fit is so off they just keep falling out, but I've never had this issue with Raycon. So I went on my run today to test these things out, and uh, they're pretty cool, they stay in no matter what, I haven't had to adjust them even once. And I don't know if you can tell, it's also raining right now and they're perfectly fine. So these are definitely my new favorite uh, earbuds. So if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact and support the channel, then click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash scaretheater to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. The WKCR hijacking rumor first originated on 4chan on March 2nd, 2013. The 4chan user made a post saying that around 1995, when he was 15 years old, he would stay up late in his room listening to the radio with an integrated tape recorder. He would dial through the stations and hit record when he heard something interesting. Well, on one particular night, he recorded something so unsettling that he tried to just forget about it and stowed the tape away in the back of a desk drawer. After all those years, he decided he finally wanted some answers and chose to share the recording online. He initially posted it to this Pico song link, but later uploaded it to YouTube with the title, The Old Tape. The recording starts off with normal sounding music, and then cut to some sort of classical violin playing, followed by an abrupt cut to a loud screeching noise. I had to remove this audio too. Screw you, vile mess. After this, we can hear eerie breathing noises. At around the 2 minute and 10 second mark, we can start hearing a voice whispering. Upon listening more closely, you can hear they are listing off names and dates as if they are reading an obituary. It lists off nine names and then repeats them, and then the recording ends and goes back to the regular program, as if nothing happened. You're tuned to WKCRFM New York, 89.9 on your dial. Columbian Music is running a little late. It will be starting in a few minutes. As one would expect, the initial post is met with a lot of skepticism, as well as people who were genuinely freaked out by what they just heard. It wasn't long before the story gained some traction, becoming the talking point of a few blogs and gaining an entry on WKCR's Wikipedia page. As with anything mysterious like this, People tried deciphering the meaning of the broadcast, starting with trying to find a connection between the names mentioned. The audio isn't very clear, so some of these names may not be completely correct, but this is the best I could do based off what I heard and the opinions of the blog posts that have looked into this. The names mentioned in the recordings are Peter Dunwell, July 4th, 1987, John Burns, November 1988, 
Barry Valentino, December 21st, 1988, Frank Oppenheimer, February 1985, Henrietta Graham, May 1987, Edward McAllis, March 17th, 1988, Rupert something, April 1988, Morgan Tunick, October 1988, and Irene DeTulio, August 22nd, 1985. Out of all the names listed, I was only able to find any further details on five of them. I found the obituary of John Burns, but there was no other real information about his passing other than that he was buried in Pennsylvania. Next we have Barry Valentino. Valentino's passing is the most tragic of all the names listed here. He was one of the victims of Pan Am Flight 103. On December 21st, 1988, this flight scheduled from Frankfurt to Detroit took off, but while they were flying over Lockerbie, Scotland, the plane exploded due to a bomb that had been snuck in with the luggage. Barry Valentino, along with the 258 other passengers, were killed as a result. He was only 28 years old. The next name is Frank Oppenheimer, which I'm sure sounds familiar to all of you. He was the brother of Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. He died on February 3rd, 1985 from lung cancer. The next name, Edward McAllis, was actually uncovered by the writer of the Odd Things Considered blog a couple years ago. It turns out McAllis is actually spelled like this. There isn't any significant information on him other than that he was born and died in New Jersey. The final name we have information on is Irene de Tullio. Her full name is actually Irene de Tullio McAllis, and she was actually the wife of the brother of Edward McAllis. Now, there are some very light connections you could probably draw from the names on the list, but none of them really lead to anything meaningful, and honestly, I don't think the names listed were supposed to be meaningful. One of the biggest things called into question about this signal intrusion is its authenticity. I wanted to learn a little bit more about the person that started this rumor on 4chan a decade ago. I learned that his 4chan post and his YouTube upload under the name Ravenmouth were not the only instances of him talking about this event. Only 16 days after making this 4chan post, he actually made a post to the No Sleep subreddit, which is basically just a subreddit for posting fictional creepy stories. He titled the post The Old Tape, and for the most part, just gave the same details he did in his original 4chan post. The only difference was that he added a creepy twist to the end. He writes, Unfortunately, and for this I sincerely apologize, it never ever stops. I told you this was something I found, and I swear that's true. It really did happen that way. It's more than that though. I don't really know how long it takes, a few weeks or months from now when you're alone and suddenly you hear that keening, quavering sound rise up like it's crawling out of your spine and into your skull, you'll understand. When that night comes, if you listen closely to what comes after that horrible sound, you'll realize that the woman will be reading your name, new names. You'll play it for your friends, your family, add their names. I hope desperately that if I can make the list long enough, add enough names, then they'll take mine off and leave me alone. I'm sorry. So him turning this into some sort of creepy pasta like this just solidifies for me that he most likely made up the whole thing and the WKCR intrusion broadcast never actually happened. I think he just wanted to start a creepy legend. Still, I wanted to talk to him myself, so I actually figured out what his email was and I asked him about this myself. I actually thought he would just admit that this was made up, but to my surprise, he still maintains that the recording he took was actually real. He says that the Reddit post on No Sleep was just made up for lore building, obviously, but he goes on to say, I really did record it off the radio when I was a teenager. I did find something strange in the dark corners, and I still don't know what it is. Hearing that violin piece still gives me chills to this day, because I know it's coming. So yeah, the truth is, I posted it online because I wanted to know what it is too. I still don't know. I'll be honest, I really thought that Ravenmouth was lying to me at this point. This broadcast doesn't get talked about all that often, and I haven't heard of anyone else who claims to have actually heard the broadcast happening before. But before just straight up calling them a liar, I decided to get in touch with WKCR themselves. Surely they would tell me this whole thing was just a myth. Well, no, they didn't. To my surprise, they responded to me, saying, As far as we know, this did take place on WKCR's airwaves. In terms of the claim that it was a hijacking, that is very unlikely. WKCR is a weird place with weird programmers, probably just some late night new music programmer having fun on the mic. One thing you guys need to know is that WKCR is a college radio station. I've read some anecdotes of other college DJs playing some goofy stuff on their school's radio just to mess with people. 
Based on this email I got from WKCR, this very well seems like it could have been the case. Finally, I want to talk about where some pieces of this audio actually originated. Part of this has already been discovered. The audio that appears in the first few seconds of the recording has been identified as a section from a song called Dippin' the Biscuits in the Soup by Billy Cobham. What no one has been able to figure out so far is where the violin music came from. Once again, had to remove this. Screw you, vile mess. I tried really hard to figure this one out to put this to rest. I asked Ravenmouth where the violin music came from, and he claims to not know. I asked the classical department of WKCR if they recognize where the music comes from, to no avail. I even listened to hours of classical music myself to see if I could recognize it somewhere. When all hope was lost, I went to the classical music subreddit and posted that section of the video to ask if they recognized where it was from. And it worked. One of them was able to identify the song as The Golden Sonata by Henry Purcell. Once again, I also had to remove, well, you get the point. Screw you, vile mass. So sorry guys, you're just gonna have to go to the old tape to hear the original violin music. Believe it or not, I was even getting copyright claims from Vile Mass for playing this part. A classical violin piece from the 1600s. Did I say screw you Vile Mass yet? It slowed down a bit in the old tape, but it's definitely the same piece. Out of all of the unnerving broadcast intrusions that have happened, the WKCR hijacking is definitely one of the creepiest. For the longest time, I really just assumed this never actually happened, but after hearing what WKCR themselves had to say on the matter, I'm very surprised. Thank you for watching, and screw you vile mess. Hey guys, I just want to let you all know that I started selling merch at shopscaretheater.com, so if you want to support the channel, I have a few designs up right now, and there will be more to come. And if you really want to show your support, then if you tweet at me with a picture of you wearing one of these items, I'll include your picture at the end of one of my videos. So check it out at shopscaretheater.com. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon where I'll be live streaming every Friday. We've done a few streams already where you can send me videos that you want me to watch. What the, what is this? What is <laughs> And hang out and play games. Oh, okay. Oh, I have this in the bag. I, I can, I can, oh, I, I taste blood. I smell blood. Oh, I can smell it. I can smell it. That's patreon.com slash scare theater.